Hello everyone. Um, welcome to our first edition of My Success Story. It's a new webinar series that we are starting um, that um, we want to share some community experience uh, amongst all of the Shopmatic merchants and help our merchants to understand insights um, and share ideas um, and also um, see how other merchants are also doing things very similar to uh, each other um, and sort of like you know grow each other's business in that way so this focus of this entire webinar series will be to um, speak to a successful merchant who's been using Shopmatic for a while and in their own right also successful in their business um, beyond just the online space um, and um, very kindly we have Kanchan from Kanika who's joining us today at the you know, very first episode and we're very very excited to have her. We will be following a format of about 40 to 45 minutes of asking her certain questions and um, sort of like um, having it like a chat with her and there will of course be uh, 15 to 20 up to 10 minutes of uh, chat opportunities wherein all participants are more than welcome to sort of ask her any questions that they want via chat and I think Kanchan will be very happy to sort of uh, share on that as well. So thank you very much Kanchan for joining us today. Thank you. Well, thanks just... Uma, thanks for the opportunity uh, to share my story with, uh, with everybody and I, um, I hope I can, uh, you know, through my story I can share some tips and some some lessons that I've learned along the way. Fabulous, fabulous. So Kanchan, let's just start with um, what or what is the brand can make up? What is your business? How did you start? Um, you know, what was the journey like for you? So I, I launched Kanika in uh, mid-2018, uh, but it, I really started the groundwork in early 2016. So it took me a good two and a half years of just plain research and study on the paths that I wanted to take with regards to my brand. Now, my brand Kanika is, is a, a fashion brand that is heavily inspired by culture, crafts and color from all over the world. I started this brand more as a, with the mindset of a consumer. I was tired of looking at just plain black leather bags or brown bags. I wanted something colorful. I wanted something happy and bright and cheery. And I, I couldn't find any such thing in, in, uh, in stores. So I said, okay, why don't I create it? So that's how it all started. And uh, in those two and a half years, since 20, between 2016 to 2018, I, I studied the market. I made notes uh, about the product categories that I wanted to okay. debut with okay. yeah. and uh, even start the process of sampling and prototyping. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, all right. So, um, so when you said you did a bit of market research, everything, what did you do? I mean, so I studied what brands were out there, what were they doing, how would I be different, what should I make uh, that is different from what other people are doing, what can I offer, what new things can I offer. Okay, all right. And what was the feedback like in the sense of? Um, so what were you testing? Like, was it price points? Was it like designs? Mainly designs, colors. Yes, of course, price points as well. Uh, mainly, I wanted to. I I would. I like to tell stories through products. So imagine a story, and then you know how do I translate it into a product? That's what I wanted to do. Give more inspired design. Nice, nice, nice. Well, so if I were to ask you that before starting your business or you know something the onset of it. Uh, if there were five things that you thought were very essential before you started the website or started the business, what according to you were those five things that you think are like important to get in place? The first thing is your product. So that's that's why people come to you. So to have a good product, you need to find the right production partners. So, so factories or sources from packaging to raw material, that should be the first thing that you should have in place. Because okay. then you know the rest of the business is there to follow. Okay. The second thing I would say is that the is the back end of the business. So just as important as a product is uh, the back end, like your domain name, your website, e-commerce solutions, regulation, compliance, consultants and advisors, trade forwarders, 
e-commerce shipment solutions for order fulfillment all of these are very very important uh, for the back end and they all need to be in place before you launch the third thing i did was uh, have my social media accounts up and running so why uh, it took about 6 months for my production process to get over and for me to launch so during that time i i built my uh, social media following i shared my brand story built an audience I told uh, my audience and followers the softer side of my brand, its philosophy, and so by the time I was I, I was ready for launch, you know, my audience was very well hooked and waiting for the product to come out. Mm, mm. The fourth thing I did was uh, figure out what am I what are going to be my distribution channels. Am I, am I going to do pop ups? Am I going to only sell online? Uh, what what platforms online besides my own website? boutiques departmental stores all of this you need to carefully study keeping in mind your own product your own uh, brand and where it all fits in so not every location or every every platform mm-hmm. applies to mm-hmm. every brand or every product you have to be careful about your positioning and consider this research and choose wisely and the fifth thing that i would say is very important is put together a marketing plan This is very important because all the effort you put into your product will come to naught if you don't market uh, your product well. So come up with a marketing strategy that is not only creative and effective but cost efficient because you you slow, you soon start to drain money on marketing uh, uh, payments. Yeah. If you don't plan, that's true. Plan that's true. Well. Yeah. So I mean, I want to just quickly summarize five things that you told, and if you could just list me, list them out for me, right? Number one was um the first one was research, research. on production so research on, on your production and partners right um, and sources on sources okay and then the second was the second one was the back end of the business back end of the domain, business domain e-commerce right right so right. back end of the business so like getting making sure that you have the right custom domain um the e-commerce platform uh you know all the capabilities of that okay that's nice okay and number 3 was and the social media the social media right so to sort of prepare your social media yeah. presence uh by having all the handles uh you know across facebook and instagram and all of twitter if that's what you are like making sure that they all sort of like in line right. with the branding as well the same brand name yes. and you know so these are fine that's nice okay and number 4 was um, the distribution channel the distribution channels how do you want to actually sell and have a basic like a road map yes um right like i mean what are what are the various ways of selling offline online mm-hmm. nice and, and number 5 if i recall correctly was the marketing plan the marketing plan and how much you want to spend and what you want to invest in it right okay marketing plan and spend nice okay that's that's um, very very useful um i know that um, because i sort of followed your brand uh, very closely um that you leveraged instagram fabulously even before you launched uh, i know you've been with us with you since short mac since 2017 yes. Yes. right yes. yeah 2017 and you actually launched your site and your brand and everything only in 2018 it took you yes. you know yeah, you really right. invested time in you know all the back and work even though you had already sort of time you know taken a subscription and done about that so instagram was a very important uh, uh component you can call that in your uh, leveraging of building the brand and the pre launch etc so tell us a little bit more about that sure. if what worked on instagram why instagram and what were your learnings on that so uh, i had launched uh, although i i launched my brand in in july my instagram started in jan of good 6 months before and uh, although my product was in prototyping and then production uh, phases i would share teasers information or clues about my upcoming product so try and drum up interest till launch you have to keep people engaged right uh, to buy that time and then besides this, i also shared uh, information about my brand my inspirations or even the de- design and the production process the craft what all goes into uh, the making of a product behind the scenes images so it it this this help create and retain a very captive audience that was very excited and waiting to see what the product was mm. especially since i i created a very different um, debut collection which is not really seen before uh then the, besides having uh, your instagram handles i mean instagram page 
handles ready. It's it's also the power of content, right? So early on, I realized the power of both visual and uh, content and copy. Okay. So I created very completely original content where where I styled the photographs, shot them myself. Uh, with Perhaps in different settings and angles, and and when the uh, I'm very um, iconic, I, I I did it to complement uh, the look of my brand, the feel, the lifestyle that I wanted to portray. Now, besides making visual uh, visually good content, it's, you have to boost it with uh, creative copy by writing descriptions that are very friendly, um, inviting. And uh, approachable to your audience. I, I, I. It's, every brand has its own tone. So some brands may be catered to a very high-end audience that might have a more serious uh, tone. I, I like to keep my brand uh, tone friendly and humble and humorous. So based on feedback from my followers, I, I, I got to know that that is actually what they look forward to. The copy. So I, I, I didn't just put. You know, just a few emojis and just uh, two word captions. I try to write creative copy based on the photograph. Okay? So that really helps because when followers see that the effort that you put in is genuine, whether it's in the photographs or the uh, copy, they tend to engage with you. They I also noticed that a lot of your Instagram it was not necessarily only about products. I mean, in fact, we're just looking at your Instagram uh, page right now, and I'm just sort of like scrolling down, and I realized that a lot of it is. Sort of like sets a mood and tone rather than just being bam 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 only the product all the time, right? So yeah. So the, the, that's the thing. The, the whole crux of my brand is about uh, culture and stories of culture and okay. lifestyle. So right. so that's what I try to portray through my brand. Okay. Uh, uh, every time there's culture, you bring in every element of culture, the celebrations and you know festivals. So I I bring all of that in because that is the crux of my brand, the uh, the lifestyle, mm. um, so culture. Okay. Mm. So do you have to do sort of like look for any sort of influence marketing, um, anything like that to sort of aid your Instagram presence to acquire more followers. So influencer marketing um, is 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 a lot more complicated than it seems. I did try it, okay. but um, you know, with the if you've seen now with the last year of uh, the, the the whole Instagram algorithm has changed. Influencer marketing has also evolved over time. Okay, so if you so I would say with influencer marketing, if you find influencers that with, you know, who believe who have the same set of um, um, uh, imagery or same style as you, it's a natural fit. So you should, you know, work with them rather than just paying anybody yeah. just yeah. for the sake of yeah. Because it'll never work. Because audience sees through, you know, whether whether it's genuine, honest, or not. Right. So never just do it just because that's what's trending. Mm. Do it only if your brand is in your brand. Okay. Image. Yeah, that's that's actually true. Because it's also a bit of like a long term yes. um, strategy. committed yes. strategy, right? It I mean, doesn't work one time. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying just using social media. I mean, I see that your following is like, I think, um, 1,400. Um, which is quite, yeah. I mean, you know, quite impressive, I think, for a young brand like yours, um, you know, which is the end 2020 now, early 2020 now. So you only launched in 2020 for two years. Um, but you have like you know about 460 posts, and that's like you know more than a year's worth. Also, do you post every day? What do you do? Well, ideally, you should at least you know, okay. five to six times a week. Of course, I get a lot busier with the other <laughs> aspects <laughs> of my business right. as a solopreneur, so it yeah. does become a, a little difficult as you go along. Of course, uh, yeah. But I mean, you should try and post as often as you can. Mm. But I would also say, don't post. Because you feel you have to post and you have to keep up that post. You know? Right. Post if you really have something nice to share mm. or something nice to say. Mm. Because, like I said, people follow because they want to trust you, they want to believe in you, not because you're just posting anything. Yeah. That's the most important uh, thing that you should keep in mind. Okay. So that's what I do. The other thing which I think um, most of our um, merchants always um, ask for is with respect to understanding a hashtag strategy. Right. right? Like, because Instagram is all about hashtags yes. and you also need to just tell us what, what, how do you pick the kind of hashtag persistence, consistency, 
you know, what's your advice? So uh, the first thing is don't it's just like, you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. so I uh, realized it the hard way. Mm. Don't just you know just copy paste the same thirty hashtags mm. and then uh, paste them. I okay. used to do that till I know that this okay. doesn't work. Okay. So well, I used to say copy paste the first twenty and then the next ten were relevant to that particular picture. Mm. But it doesn't work because it uh, the Bot, I mean, the Instagram algorithm sees you as maybe some kind of a bot. Right. So right. it doesn't work. So ideally, you should type out and try to have a good, uh, okay. you know, mix that is pretty much different from what you have had the previous year. Of course, a few 10 to 15 yeah. here and there would be the same. But some consistent ones, right? Like, I mean, something yes. that is location based, something yes. that is category based, exactly. something which yes. is then maybe. Yeah. variable of what the theme is just if it's a blue bag then you, yes. I'm assuming yes, so you yes. just say right like you know Monday morning blues and something, yes. something just for play on that yes so that about something? 15 would be fine if they are the, the same because you're, in, you're trying to target a particular category or location right or, um, or an industry right mm -hmm. right also for you Instagram has been would, 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 would I be right in saying that Instagram has been a primary pillar of platform to yes yeah what about facebook i mean i know because instagram and facebook are so sort of closely tied with each other right. any, anything that you have experienced and can share on this? also i do have a good engagement on facebook as well but because i'm in the fashion business the uh, instagram is the place where people come to see fashion mm -hmm. because it's more image heavy yeah so it depends on each business each brand what is the product uh, secondly, my um, uh, the Facebook nowadays caters to a more older audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then again, it depends on where your uh, target sure. audience or is. is. Yeah. Correct. So you should concentrate heavily on that one. Of course. Yeah. So, so Instagram is great for what kind of categories according to you? But just from your observation. So fashion, lifestyle, I would say, are very good. Uh, yes. Home decor, anything that is visually very, very pleasing. Mm. But uh, things like service-oriented uh, businesses that cater to say uh, cakes and catering or baking. Right. So Facebook is a is a better platform. I, I would yes. say they see a lot more engagement there, a lot more sharing there. Okay. Because people tend to, you know, they are looking for something useful. They tend to go to Facebook and do a Facebook search rather than an Instagram search. Okay, nice. That's interesting. You do, um, uh, you get inquiries and you know from customers, potential customers from by Instagram. Both, uh, both. Uh, yeah. yeah, because I, I, mean, I, I do post on one side, post on the other. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Okay. But Instagram is is a, a more appropriate uh, platform for you. for you. Okay, nice, nice. So that really brings us to the next question, right? Customers, because that's what I think um, all businesses eventually want. At the end of the day, it's great to create a brand. It's great to give life to your passion via a business. Um, but you want to see the proof of the pudding in your business idea, right. and you want to make it sustainable, something which is self-funding and stuff. Right? That's right. what I think is the goal for most of the um, merchants, uh, solopreneurs, partners, whatever size they may be. Right? So customers are such an important part of the whole business journey. How do you? Or how did you attract customers? How do you do it on an ongoing basis? Um, and how do you retain customers loyalty as well? So it's from many angles, new customers, existing customers, bringing back customers, anything, right? So what are the things that you do? Right. So, so the first point is to attract customers, right? So again, it goes back to the, the crux of your brand, your product. Mm -hmm. That has to be good enough for people to be attracted to it. So whether it is innovative and what what are you a uh, need are you solving uh, in in your potential customers life right? are you fulfilling your fulfilling your brand promise whatever it be whether it's satisfying a need or improving their quality of life or helping them save money or just giving them some beautiful products uh, offering a certain lifestyle so that's the product okay then the second one is the USP and messaging so you have to be clear in your own mind about what the USP of your brand is and uh, and keep delivering that message about your USP um, of products to your audience. So you, have, you do it actively, but you do it subtly as well um, because they, your audience needs to form an opinion in their mind about what sets you apart from other brands. Okay. Why should they buy your product? Uh, then the third thing is sales, service, and terms. So if you give them customer-friendly terms of, you know, free shipment or you know, shipment where you 
just take a, a hit on part of it and they just pay a part of it and delivery, free deliveries, returns, and of course, packaging. So all, all of this attracts new customers. Nice. Now to retain customers, I mean, it's not just enough to give them a good quality product or a very nice sales service. You need to give them a lot more than products, especially in this crowded market of brands across product categories. You want to give them a, an unforgettable buying experience and that will help build loyalty towards your brand. You know, it's about how you make them feel from the very first interaction with your brand to, to even after the sale. You know, that will be the deciding factor of whether mm. they will come back or not. Because it's right? really yeah, the yeah. whole experience. And you know, this can be done through so many different ways. You, know, you give them thoughtful service, you give them beautiful packaging, you give them a good after sales uh, experience, like a message or an email about their feedback. What do they think? You know, were they happy with the purchase? Is there something that you you would um, you know they want you to help them with? So you know, if so, this will happen. Speak about your brand positively, which mm -hmm. they, to their friends, to their uh, community, and then that brings. More, more per, yeah, potential customers. So, for example, I will just give an example that I had. I had a pop up that I did. Now, a lady purchased a pair of earrings and a necklace from me for as a Christmas gift for her daughter in New York. Okay. And then um, I had packaged it in very uh, Christmas themed packaging. Now, okay. when I did the packaging, it was not just uh, you know store bought Christmas themed packaging. And I had like uh, you know made it innovative. Plus, I had done my own uh, branding, so it was mm -hmm. very very mm -hmm. different. Uh, Christmas theme packaging. Okay. So she 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 loved it so much. She told me just it's just the whole experience of buying from yeah. buying this from you makes me want to you know buy more. Right? <laughs> I, I don't I just love the whole experience. Right. And then and then she went back and uh, it was a two day pop up. Okay. So the next day a whole group of ladies senior ladies came to my stall and they said you know you are the one uh, who uh, our friend was talking about right. and then they also purchased right. and they just loved the whole experience. Right. I think what about this so powerful. Yes. Right, it's so powerful for um, nice artisanal brands, yes. right? Because that's yeah. um, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. And then after sales service, and then how you handle complaints, right? Yeah. That's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, generally, if people have some complaint, they they bought your brand, or I mean, bought into your product because they believe in your brand, they trusted you the first time. Correct. So, if for some reason they they are not happy about it, you know, you shouldn't take it negatively. You you in fact want them to. To know that you're always there if there is any problem so mm -hmm. handle it positively try to understand and empathize with the customer that they just want their problem sorted if you sort out their problem they're happy to go back mm -hmm. if they don't want to have uh, an altercation with you Correct. so that that's a very important thing understand where they're coming from and if you really can't help them like you know if, if say they're, they're, they're being unreasonable or very difficult and you can't offer them what they're uh, right. you know their expectation then just apologize genuinely and you know try to make it up to them by either taking it back or giving them a free gift or a voucher or some other way you can redress it. Because you know a well handled and redressed customer complaint can turn even the bitterest customer into a into the most loyal fan. And if you don't handle it well, it the, the simplest of complaint which you could have sorted can become a major PR crisis, especially given social media where anybody can just you know, take screenshots and spread yeah, the word. So you know, you have to handle all of this well. Not just complaints, I would say, even feedback. So if your customer comes to tell you, you know, this particular piece of jewelry, can you make the book like this? Because it's easier to wear. Take it positively and you know, work on it. Yeah. Use that to um, the next collection. Improve, yes, right. improve your product. Take that. It's very important that data which your customer is giving you. So all of this helps to retain customers. They can see through when you're genuinely interested, when you're genuinely, uh, genuinely open to feedback. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true, that's true. And they also mentioned the fact that you are having customers um, in Singapore. But I know you're a Singapore-based yes. business. Um, and uh, if I'm not wrong, some of your products come from, get manufactured come from elsewhere. You yes. go for your inspiration to many places around the world. I mean, and you're from India. So look towards your own sort of like look inwards to for inspiration there you also take a lot of inspiration from uh, singaporean icons i know that you had a very interesting design that you launched on your earring your jewelry um and i think i saw somewhere in your pr uh, uh mrs Jocelyn Teo was wearing yes. it right so the entire cabinet actually really? all the MPs in singapore yeah uh, uh, wow uh, the whole documentation you order with 
awesome yeah. really yeah, because i remember seeing that it's on so um, on um, your uh, instagram correct I and mean, that's where i remember yes. seeing it yes. oh that's fabulous i wanted to just quickly take a look at it again if possible if you could find that yeah. but i mean the, the, but my question was going to be like why i'm looking for it and finding it right um your your clientele comes from across the world or how do you, or just largely from singapore and how do you facilitate cross border orders etc so it, it's not it's not that hard i mean it, uh, in my case my uh, products sell very well in places that are more oh, hot and uh, summery resort right yes that's one that's one that's what yeah. happens i thought this design was fantastic mm-hmm. and uh, yeah um See one another in the designer thing, right? Yeah. Cool. Sorry. Yeah, you're saying. Yeah. So, um, so, 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 I it, it's not a difficult. I mean, you have to figure out, you know, shipping solutions, e-commerce logistics, and if you find the the right uh, partners mm. uh, to fulfill uh, your uh, shipments, yeah, the week, it works. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. So it has worked out for you because yes. of these kind of solutions. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. So yeah, so coming back to this, I thought it was fantastic um, that you had this wonderful design. Um, yeah, it's really really cool, um, very innovative, yeah, it's and really works. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, exactly, right. And I mean, it's, um, I don't think I believe I have seen anyone leverage the design of the Singapore flag um, so beautifully into their work in jewelry mm-hmm. lines. So that is why I sort of wanted to draw attention to that. Okay, um, I think uh, the next question I want to ask. Um, Function is about um, online and offline. You also right. referred to it. Now you said that you participate in pop up events. Mm-hmm. I know that you have a fantastic uh, website. Uh, we were just looking at some of you know, like your website itself, and all the products that you have across it, uh, various categories, etc. And you also are very active on social, social commerce as well, in a sense, right? Because right. you're so active on that. So that's the, that's the, that's the other channel, so yes. to speak, which is still right. sort of layering on top of online, yes. But it is it's sort of a channel on its, in its own right. So offline and online—that's the thing that I want to talk about. How do you find the balance, uh, or let them both interplay to work to grow your business? Because I think it's important not to sort of. Or it's not possible, I think, for many people just sort of like stick to one channel. Mm-hmm. Possible sometimes, not possible sometimes. Mm-hmm. In your case, you have leverage all of them. I just want to hear a bit about that from you. Uh, it definitely, I mean, when they go hand in hand for me, for my business, online and offline, I can't do one without the other, or rather I shouldn't. Uh, because it, uh, being in the fashion business, right, it's, it's, uh, it's such a visual medium, fashion. Mm-hmm. You, if, when you want to buy clothes or whatever, products, jewelry, you want to see them, you want to hold them, feel them, wear them, try them on. So it's uh, so that part is very important. But at the same time, you want the convenience of buying online, not having to go and uh, buy these from stores. So, so for me, you know, be, uh, being in this business, the offline part gives me a chance to meet my customer face to face. So I get to see what she likes, what she doesn't like, what does she pick, you know, what uh, is she attracted to in my products from mm-hmm. online product assortment, mm-hmm. what does she go for. So this is why I do pop-ups, exhibitions, and I have stockers. So I get first-hand data. I talk to the, the sales uh, people on the shop floor for the, for the stockers, and I ask them, you know, what people like, what do they say. So, uh, you know, so then I know what works, what sells, what should be discounted, and most importantly, what I should bring in in, in my next collection, mm. based on what people uh, like. Mm. So, you know, these are very good opportunities also to look at potential customers, not just your customers, since you get to know who bought it, what is their age to like, you know, uh, what is the demographic, all that. Now, so for example, if you're sitting in a pop up and you have people come to your uh, stall, Again, mm-hmm. saving what they're attracted to, but then you you also uh, study them, study what they're wearing, mm-hmm. what colors they're mm-hmm. wearing, you know, what brands are they wearing, or shoes, or bags, or right. clothing. Right. What is the kind of jewelry? So it sort of paints a picture of your exactly. Customer, right? So, so yeah. you know who you're targeting, and you know what you should do to uh, target them. Right. Right. So that that really helps. So even though online you get your data through Google Analytics and uh, mm-hmm. Facebook pixels. This primary data is mm. trumps all that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this this really helps yeah. to know yeah. that uh, to know their preferences. So that's offline, and I really yeah. and I really you know um, uh, 
understand what you're saying about how a direct customer contact is very, very valuable. And not just when you're launching the business, but at periodic intervals, yes. so that you're constantly having your, you know, your finger on the pulse of the customer, yes. right? But you can't have it yes. on the finger of the pulse. You need the customer on a daily basis. This is a little important. Yes. Possible, especially for cus for you know, uh, stores which are not sort of like having physical stores, yes. and which is where the online play comes in, right? Like to sort of yes. keep your business open for three sixty five days twenty four seven. So, in your experience, how has that helped you? You know, having that online play. Right. So, so just like the online, right? So, where you uh, face, you have this face to face interaction with your customers, and then you know sometimes people are undecided. They they are not have to buy just like that and make the decision but they do go back to your website and check and then they make that purchase mm. depending on the experience you have given them even if they have not bought from you okay. so that so that's where the online comes in secondly uh by studying the data from offline i tailor my content online also to to make it uh, look more seamless, okay. right? The experience of offline with online. Mm. So, so if, if this is my target audience, this is the these are the colors that they respond to. Maybe that's the those are the colors I want to have on my website. That's the imagery. That's the written content. Uh, those kind of things. So all that data that I pick from my offline, and of course the online data as well. Facebook pixels, Google Analytics, and then I tailor my content, my web pages, my web design mm. to suit that. Uh, preference. Okay, so that helps again to attract that audience and retain it. Right, right. Um, so I mean, you also use your website the way I see it. Um, very sort of interestingly because I see videos, I see images, I see you know um, moving things, and it's very engaging. Right. How frequently do you refresh it or? Work on your website. What's yeah? So I generally work according to a marketing calendar. Okay. So I create a calendar of you know how, when I want That's to nice. refresh. Yeah. 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 So okay. that it, it, it helps give you a kind of a scaffold mm -hmm. on which to build your marketing plan. Mm -hmm. So I generally try to look at major events in the year or or in Singapore, you know, worldwide within Singapore. And I, I try to put relevant content based on that. Right, right. So how much of a forward planning do you do? I mean, do you necessarily have to have a whole year planned and then do you have to be that disciplined? Or right. I'm not very disciplined, so I don't think I could particularly do that. So what 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 is your um you know the ideal So if thing? you if when you sit down to do this, right? Ideally you should have the whole year, the whole calendar okay. year's plan. All right. But you, that doesn't mean that you need to do everything at that time. You just broadly need to chalk out, you know, what are the relevant milestones the other yeah. in the year. And I need to, you know, and then you uh, you think of, you know, what is the marketing um, strategy for that event, right? Mm -hmm. So are you going to do giveaways? Are you going to do, um, I don't know, competitions? Or something like that. Are you going to do influencer marketing mm. or run a sponsor post? You may want to use all of these at all times, right? Mm -hmm. So you see what works for that event and then broadly chalk it out. And then, of course, a, a couple of months before, you need to start planning, right? Mm. Because you need to have your imagery ready, you need to have your content yeah. and copy ready. Yeah. So you do need to plan well ahead. But if you have broadly have your year's agenda, yeah. It helps to then just execute yeah. two months. Before. I think especially uh, the high peak season, sales yes. season normally is like what, like August to December? Would yes. I be correct in saying that? Yes, yeah. well, being in Singapore, you, uh, Chinese New Year, the, the, the Chinese New Year, then yes. of course Christmas, then there is yeah. the, the you know, summer also season rush because people are buying for their own gifting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And then GSS time as well. That's so, yeah. yeah, other very sort of topical. Yes. Um, Events, yes. right? Which are very unique to exactly. the market that you are actually operating. Yes. That's a very cool one. So GSS for the benefit of people who don't know GSS is the Great Singapore Sale. Yes. Right? It's the Great Singapore Sale. When you sort of whole of Singapore retail is on sale, yes. if you go to all the malls and then you sort of leverage that also to bring that uh, mood into your yes. online uh, I think that, that's, that's very clever. That's very clever. Okay. What kind of things work? Um, so if I if you are to say tell me um, Two most successful um, conversion things. Is it a discount code or is it a promotional thing or is it a sample? In your line of business, and what, what is the most effective thing that works to bring in more sales? It's the experience. So okay. For example, uh, for yeah. Christmas, right? Yeah. Say yeah. The Christmas packaging because it takes the medium out of you're trapping it and giving it to somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, 
what can you do that is thoughtful keeping mm. in mind your customer so yeah. it, definitely that is that just yeah that's yeah. yeah so sometimes it's not necessarily giving some money off or giving some you know like a freebie it's actually adding value yes to that purchase or the product that you're actually selling i that, that's that's um yeah that's interesting because sometimes um prs you know we think that only a uh, price is yes. a big a big barrier or you know uh, and therefore we need to shave off some discount and stuff like that and sometimes not necessarily yeah, that's that's not. Yeah. because if you if you're just constantly discounting constantly selling you know it's it kind of comes across as if you're you're just trading you're just buying and selling like mm. you want to build a brand mm. you need to do a lot more than that you need to give uh, give to your um, uh, audience a story it is something about you mm. that the trust that they should have in you yes. so right. that makes a difference yeah very cool um so i'm going to now come to um a very important question that for you to because this is you know what we've sort of talked a little bit about how you started which is like the history of the brand and how you are sort of are updating now what your learnings are but it's always about looking forward right? looking for what's going to come this year and you know as three three years from now and five years from now but let's take a very immediate point of view and so the 2020 um if there are three things that you think are going to be important for businesses small businesses especially to be successful independent brands to be successful um what are the three things that we should be doing or leveraging or be recognizing so one is um, know your audience mm -hmm. and know your brand mm -hmm. and see that there are synergies there mm -hmm. whether your brand uh, and what your brand has to offer makes sense for the audience that you're targeting that's the most important thing okay second is don't uh, just in a in desperation make sales don't try to stray away from your uh, brand identity and your brand values and mission because you will end up pleasing nobody even if it takes some time you you know if you are true to your brand okay that's what people will identify you by now what is special about this brand oh yeah i recognize it this instant recall mm -hmm. stay true to that but at the same time don't discount your customer because finally you want to make sale of course yeah so, yeah. so keeping your it's a very fine balance and right very fine type of work yeah so keep your identity but tailor your um, your offering to give the customer what they want correct okay without losing your own identity okay okay that's me too <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> <left to go. laughs> well, that's actually one <laughs> that's only one okay <laughs> the second one i would say is okay. you know engage with your audience yeah. you continue and don't bother about the instagram algorithm you know just just keep at it yeah. you know, be be true to your uh brand don't post for the sake of posting right post what's right for you yeah. so that's that's the thing uh, you know write well put a beautiful photograph or right. videos and then the third thing is you know look at uh, all the um sale avenues and um uh, options that you have and again don't go go for everything not mm -hmm. sometimes it may not work for your brand just because you have more points of sale go to the relevant uh, points of sale mm -hmm. right? you know whether it's stock is you know what what kind of positioning are you doing mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. should fit in very well in that yeah okay so i'm i'm just going to quickly summarize what i think i heard from these three things that i wanted to know from you right i think the number one thing that you said was about having full um recognition of what you as a brand stand for what the values are and also understanding who your customer is very sharply and clearly and marrying these two things um and finding that balance without compromising one or the other yes in that sense right not really compromising on your brand values and that vision but you know, not sort of being so um haughty at the cost of you know, the customer yes okay, so. so that that's number one um i think this is great the second thing that i heard from you was to be um very consistent um with your effort um to uh put ammunition behind your marketing um and it does not necessarily mean throwing money at it it is persistence and consistency even on a platform or um like you know which is actually just free to you right like social media um also contributes a lot to actually growing your brand yeah. right i mean it's not only about the dollars and cents but persistence and consistency yeah. which builds a brand right that's the second Absolutely. thing i heard from you right and the third thing i'm hearing from you is to 
explore all the sales opportunities and avenues that may be available for you and the business. Um, um, and therefore, sort of like keeping an open mind uh, to say, I'm going to try some bazaars, I'm going to try some pop-up events, I'm going to be consistent with my online channel, I'm going to, you know, but uh, finding once again the balance of, especially for offline events, what works yes. and what doesn't work for you. Online is of course online, right? I mean, your, your store is always there. For you. you sort of really shape that. But offline is where you have less control right. over the various offerings. And then you have to be picky and choosy about what you pay, right. sort of what you participate in, right. so that it blends well with the hard earned brand image and you know, sort of online person that you created. And would I be correct in some yes. cases that? But that works for online as well, right? There are now so many okay. marketplaces, online marketplaces. That's interesting. That yes, yes. I mean, so, so, store, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a very high end brand selling on Amazon won't work, right? Correct. Even though it's a sales brand. Correct. Correct. So that again, it, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, okay, great. Um, I think um that brings us to the end of our chat, uh, so to speak. I would just like to. Um, allow the participants also to sort of like you know have them share some questions if they um, have to ask of you. Um, so let me quickly enable that. Okay, we have a question from Ido. Um, all right, um, you're going to have to allow me a minute till I figure this out actually. So please, um, okay, where is it, chat? Just give me a second. 